Thanks so much, Scott. Thanks for sharing your journey about, and about moms. Um, so my, I'm Nancy Murray, the Chief Development Officer of the Innovation School. We're thrilled to have you tonight. Some of my colleagues will join me, and we're asking a couple questions, and then it's up to you guys. We have a line right up there, so get your questions ready and get them lined up, and we'll open it up uh, for you. So since I'm from the Information School, Scott, could you talk a little bit about the importance of gathering and analyzing data as you tell your mom's story? Well, data is tricky. Uh, data, you know what's worse than new data? It's bad data. Um, and, and data is also subjective. Because uh, I was just hearing, I was just listening to um, this little, uh, Bezos was on a podcast, and he had someone say, the data shows we're going great. And he goes, I don't feel like we're going great on, on customer calls. And he said, and they said, no, look at the data, it's going great. And he goes, pick up the phone and call me right now. And they picked up the phone, and it was a bad experience. The point there is that the data is part of the feedback. This is how I see it from me and my mom. It's part of the feedback, but it's not the truth. It's, it's an element that should be um, um, you know, digested and processed and analyzed. Uh, and data can be very subjective. Um, one quick example. Um, there's this thing that should cause a shrink. I like to call it waste, because it's really what it is. It's just waste. Um, waste in the industry is a percent of is a, is a percent of sales. So if you have a store that's doing, you know, you know, two hundred thousand a week and you're at three percent waste, um, I don't know what the math is on that, but but uh, uh, fifteen thousand dollars or whatever. Um, and then and but if you have a slower store that's only doing hundred. And their waste is is um, a, the same dollar amount. If it's a if it's a percentage, you know, they get dent when they're really doing better. Because it's harder to um, have lower waste when your store is slower. Um, so anyway, I always say that averages and percentages cloak a lot in good game. Hi. So my question is, as a founder of moms, uh, what your personal values or philosophical um, ideas guide your leadership style and decision-making process within the company? Um, say it again, I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. What personal values or philosophies guide your leadership style and decision-making processes? Yeah. I mean, it comes down to, I, I challenge everything. Um, 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 and I smell myself this good people, conflict is really important. Um, so um, with that, I don't think anything happens. Um, and so my job is really um, to um, be really, um, uh, uh, to have people have healthy conflict and to debate back and forth. Um, my behavior is, you know, also I like to challenge a lot of professional wisdom. I just don't, uh, there's a lot of, like if you look at food itself, I mean, it's just driven by lobbyists and, and whole industries. The, the food pyramid that we all grew up with is, like, just put out of my industry. It's gone accurate. So I, I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm a cynic, but I, I am one major skeptic. Thank you, Star, for coming here. I'm Rupi Ambassador. I'm a faculty member of the School of Business, where your father is to teach, I guess, a long time ago. Uh, my question is, what are some of the obstacles that Moms are getting food is facing, and what are you doing to overcome those challenges or obstacles? Well, let's see, obstacles. Um, I would say um, growth is is tricky. Um, you know, you can grow yourself right out of business. Um, and so I think that there is, um, we had, we, you know, I don't like to, I don't like to figure things out. Um, almost all the, the good ideas I've had are someone else's idea. Um, I think that um, the biggest problem I think we're having is, it's, it's actually not that big a problem right now, it's, it's eased up as labor. Um, and, and yeah, and, and you know, just, I think that's the biggest problem now. I mean, we try to do everything we can to like, um, I mean, we love employees, they're just the best, and they're such a great community in every store. 
Um, and, and by the way, competition for our employees is, is, is more intense than it is for customers. And so we better add your stuff together if you want a, a good company. Thank you. Does anyone from the audience like to ask a question? Okay, hi, how are you? My name is Kavina Garcia. My question is, was there ever a scandal or event that you had to publicly address, and if not, what would be the most effective way to do so as a CEO? I mean, I read about this. Um, I see a lot of CEOs, you know, quote, apologizing. Um, we haven't had a scandal. Um, I, although, I, I'm taking some flack um, and and I'm, so, I'm very into it. It's, it just comes with the territory. Uh, and, and anybody does. One thing I know is that humans have a very short memory, um, and, um, but they get outraged really quickly, um, especially in this day and age with social media, of course. Um, so, long story short is, as, you know, I don't care that much what people think of me. Um, I care what I think of me and the mirror and the ones close to me. Um, um, and I would just say, see, you know, so there's research out there. Obviously, you better be authentic. You know, people can feign authenticity like, all day long. Um, and, um, and fix it. I mean, fix it. Make it better. Hi, Adam. So, thanks for your talk. Thank you for and I like shopping at Mars in public park, I particularly like getting things for bulk because it saves some packaging. And um, so I, I do have a question uh, about uh, the potential, well, the, the, the fraud that is the fraudulent practice as the organic food and market industry uh, back in 2007. I mean, it's, it's just a thing that you know, I shop and I think about this. Mm -hmm. um, back in 2017, the Washington Post ran a series of stories about, you know, organic foods sometimes are not really organic. So as a customer, how can I make sure that the organic produce I buy are organic short of taking them to an independent lab and things like that? Thank you. Okay, so um, okay, a couple of things there. Where humans are involved, there's a art and there's fraud. I don't care where it is, Nonprofits, you name it. There's always messiness with humans. Washington Post reported on some of that messiness. It's not widespread. It happens everywhere. The organic industry and the certification is the most regulated section of food and agriculture there is. So there's no absolutes, but it's the safest bet, the, the highest inspected, the most regulated. Um, um, I forget. Does that, does that answer your question fully? Go ahead, Leah. That's an answer set, Jim Barber. At least according to the articles, and I it may not be the truly complete picture because that's just say things are nasty. Um, but it seems Amen. that USDA seems to suggest that and it does kind of have the trouble to keep in check of those mm -hmm. practices. And um, what it what is it word? And seems to be able to keep track of that, and keep the fraud and practice in check. Now, like, I don't know if that's true or not. It's not really true. But it's, it's, it's third party. You know, you go to prison, first of all, and that's happened. Um, someone is selling something that's not organic, they know it, they go to prison. Um, and, um, um, and I would say this too, like, like, I read these articles, I've read them all, and I read them, and I know. Um, it can be on meat. Um, that is a company that will have a valuation of billions of dollars. There's gonna be a Tesla of wheat, <laughs> um, like to disrupt the whole wheat industry. What's happened to that company now? They're, they've been, the meat industry came out and do a lot of attention to both processed foods. Um, so I'm a little, I, th I think the media gets duped sometimes, um, and where they might have their own narrative, where I see a lot of bias, and, and I'm, it's a human, again, it's humans, like they go pick their, 
they were, they were quite interesting. Um, so, from the inside, like, I would pay to text, like, like you know, like, like it, I would be interested. But I'm telling you right now, like every day, you know, people have too much to risk, and there's too many inspections. Um, it's just like crime anywhere, basically. Um, um, and so I, I'm going to say this though: I think that that well, I'll read articles sometimes, and like they're just not, they, they don't know, like I know, or in the industry of inspection. Well, one of my key people is all the NLS people work for years, but she knows inside and out. <laughs> the regulations and the scrutiny that every farm there goes. I was over there with the Trade Association board for a couple of terms. Like, I know from the inside that that made a report is sensationalistic. And it's actually based on anecdotes. Yeah. Yes, well, I'm Aditi Arafranke, a master's student at the Info School. So obviously, you know, moms has a lot of ups and downs, right? So what motivated you to you know, keep going during the lows and you know, what advice would you have for you know, budding entrepreneurs that are good? Yeah, well, it's very easy to keep going when you have available choices. <laughs> uh, you know, and a choice can be bad, actually. Like, I never felt like my, my job, I didn't have any options. And so I was never like, oh, I gotta get over to work today. Well, or be homeless. You know, like, it's just not like, like uh, so it made it easier. And so when I got to these difficult points, um, it's very stressful. It's, you know, I remember sleepless nights, you know, being so hot, and um, tears. I, I remember it was 2000, mid 2009. What I mean is uh, the economy, ups and downs, because we're food, um, but the banks weren't. And they were, I feel like they were gonna foreclose on a loan that we had. And, um, and we were losing money at the time because of those two stores that we had that I mentioned. And, um, and I met her, and I haven't been in for a few years now, but the uh, Max wife at the time, I remember going up and saying, it's over. And she burst into tears. It was a terrible choice of words for my point of view because I was saying the prices are lower. But, but when the wife of an entrepreneur, or the spouse of an entrepreneur, is not a good one um, because of these ups and downs. I mean, the, the, again, we're wanting to bet the whole pot. I don't think anyone's going to bet the whole pot. I did that like five, six times, when everything was so risk. And it was, it was close and stressful. Um, I don't know that I would, I would not pick any of their life ever. I, I, I kind of feel like it's, you know, I, I think you have to have a personality for it. Good evening. Um, I just wanted to, I didn't quite catch through your talk about um, the passion that you had in the beginning of in 1987. Um, just can you talk a little bit about, um, it sounds like it was kind of luck. You just kind of, um, you backed in, but where does the passion of organic foods come in? Um. Like, where's the passion? Like, I did back in, and it was a lot of luck. Um, I feel like, again, my personal, I remember being a kid, 15, 16, and being in the mall, inside your store, and being like, how does this happen? How, how, does, how could this happen? This must be mainly for like big conglomerates. Um, and I remember just thinking, I, I, you know, I, I think I had to do my own gig. Um, so again, I think there's a passion for entrepreneurialism that I have for people pleasing, for challenging conventions. Um, um, but again, it's and 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 um, that's a stormy environment. It's like breathing to me. Like the alternative is just horrible. And so my passion, it's not even a passion. It's like a, it's just like don't rob a store, you know what I mean? Like, it is, it, it's like just so ingrained that it's, it's just, uh, um, it's just part of my, my makeup and my thing. I mean, and it's very urgent. Like, you know, I, we were at one point the 10th biggest user of renewable energy in, in America. And I think the Pentagon was number one, you know? And then coal was number two. Like, we were up there, we were early. Um, now we're like, number 10,000th probably, you know, um, because solar. I mean, we played car chargers 12 years ago. 
Nobody is. Good pleasure. Thank you. Um, but we, you know, we had to, we had to make that, that we had to show people. There's a car charger. Start thinking about this stuff. And so, and, and you know, and we paid more. They said, you see it as an investment. Anyway, the whole organic thing. Organic foods is better. Uh, for me, it's mostly about the environment. Um, some people think organic food or, or chemical farming is horrible. They think it causes cancer. I'm not a doctor. Well, I'm not a scientist. Uh, I don't know. I, I think those chemicals are horrible. But that's people's choice. I know this. Those chemicals are destroying our environment. Um, yeah, we put it all to local farms, local farmers. I, if you're not organic, I don't like it. I don't care where you go. Like, you might have to get away from the Chesapeake watershed. Um, so, I go to these farmers markets and I'm seeing all these local, well, know your farm. It's like, well, okay, I know this guy and that's his organic. He's about a bunch of chemicals on the land and killing ecosystems. Anyway, so, you can see it's not like a. It's, it, everything's green, and as a sense of urgency, I'm sitting here. Hello, my name is Ella uh, I'm uh, a level of the, uh, of the Smith School. Uh, you are talking about non-conforming to these drug accord. I want to promote that a little bit. Uh, and you just mentioned, just very, uh, you know, here one of your recent questions, that conformity was not being an option. You'd be miserable. So could you talk about the role of non-conformity uh, in, in your development and in, in general? I mean, as you've seen other, a lot of entrepreneurs have shared the same sentiment that do the nine to five job was just against their like being uh, of, of, in some way or form. And then what are the guardrails? How do you know that your non-conformism has gone to a certain point and that you, know, you have to conform? I mean, you know, um, you know, I'm not. A, I, I don't want to be a cynic, um, and I hope I'm not. I am a skeptic. Um, I think that my um, my you know. My, my parents didn't reject any, any, um, any idea was on, on this, um, which is maybe right. And my father would debate with us, the professor, and Um And he, he would take sides for fun. Um, so, um, um, so the, as a business guy, you know, sometimes I feel like, um, I guess I'll just say this, but I sometimes like it in the wrong field. Like, like I just see things that happen behind, whether it's in all, you know, whether it's it's government um, industry. It's mostly industry. And just say you can go to Google, for example. We you know, we banned bottled water eight years ago. It's such a scam. Go to Google, the story of Biden walking out into, and you'll see how we all named it into, or recycle of plastics. That's a petroleum industry um, bait switch. So it just makes it very convenient. So what I'm saying, and, and the answer to your question is, um, it's conformity of thought, um, and um, and I feel like I feel like um, there's so much sleepwalking going on, and. And I have the privilege of seeing industry um, and politics at a level, and more than the most people. And I was also taught to just not, I don't want to conform just for the sake of it, or, 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 or not conform just for the sake of it. Um, I don't want to get in that where I'm just like outraged and everybody's, you know. Um, but I, I do think that. Um, um, uh, conforming thought, thoughts. I, you know, I, I think a lot of people are wrong about a lot of stuff, um, and we're, we're manipulated for, 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 by industry. I just see it all the time. Over here. Hi, Scott. My name is Steve Freeman. I've been a loyal shopper for a bunch of years, and uh, I want to particularly say I was impressed with the idea that one of your philosophies is spread joy. And also complimenting on keeping the coffee stand that you have in the stores. <laughs> it really shows the stock that that there's so many people seem to enjoy it. They walk around that cup of coffee, and I think they look forward to that on Saturday morning over at the town. It's been like, well, um, thinking from larger scope in, in uh, 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 supply chain management and dealing with local farmers. Um, I know sometimes you bet Jehovah 
eggs and store our goods with. Sometimes they don't have everything because they're just a small farm. And the same thing with mom's milk. Sometimes it's tough to get, you know, the milk that I want because the farm could. So I have to balance local farms versus large distributors, wholesalers. I mean, that's got to be a heck of a problem for you. Um, and it is. Um, it, it, it takes a lot of expertise, a lot of massaging. I had a team of 10 people up at up our central store support offices uh, working with all these vendors and figuring out local versus large. It's funny, like, um, the supply chain is interesting, you know. Um, I would say that, that going back a little bit to this big bag and this kind of thing, um, companies that get large are usually do it for a reason, because they're competent, and, and, they, and, they, and they're and they smart, and they're driven down prices to efficiencies. Um, so you take a place like Driscoll's. Um, Driscoll's is an amazing berry maker, and they're maxed. They're almost a cartel um, at this point. Um, the strawberry is from Pennsylvania. They taste great, and they last for about 15 hours. Um, they start to go bad. Um, and so this balance of small, local, large, non-local, there's so many factors that are so great. Um, strawberry is really perfectly grown in, in California. And people talk about the fruit mines. Well, the truck in Pennsylvania is sending down a diesel truck that's one-fourth full. Maybe their farm operation isn't, isn't as efficient by terms of machinery. Um, their stuff spoils much faster. Just called it sending out these strawberries, boring in perfect conditions for strawberries, floor to ceiling on these massive, on these big trailers. And so I didn't like this to show the carbon footprint is worse when they come from, from, from these schools because they're just so efficient. And anyway, that's a little example of, of really, to your question, you know, what is better? And, and, and what do we choose? It's got to be organic. Organic is first priority. Um, and that's very important to us. Some farmers were very quirky, local farmers, right? Um, um, you know, and we actually sometimes get at their values. Um, and they might, there was a guy who makes, makes um, a dairy product to um, sell nasty email to Stratner, who's fundraising, and it was a political issue, and we got with him. He doesn't even know why we got with him. But this job contacted us and said, look at this. My supplier just so you know said this, and we, 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 we stopped caring. Anyway, I love your question. Um, supply chain is the, 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 there's many more disruptions when the when the farmer is smaller. Um, you know, sometimes we get the, these local farmers. They got their kids working. They're selling egg plants are huge, six to a pop. You know what I mean? And then they go, I'm sorry, we can't. You know, we want to support you, but we can't until you get your stuff together. Um, so it just is always, it is a big, it's not a big problem, but it's a huge thing to manage. Thanks for that question. Um, lovely, I love the coffee. Hi, Scott. Thank you so much for speaking tonight. Um, my name is LJ. I'm one of many union members at your college park store. We had a lot of your employees reaching out from other stores wanting to unionize. They're worried about retaliation and union busting. Can we guarantee them that you won't retaliate and union bust the way you have with three stories in the past? No, we've never done that. That's actually a lie. And, and I'm not going to sit here and say that, uh, I'm not going to that this information out here. And by the way, there's a decertification effort at your store uh, because, the, because your union was threatening our, our uh, immigrant and employees with deportation. And long, Would you like a real story behind that? Because my roommate, who is an undocumented worker, was looking for a job, and I was trying to get him a job at that mom's because we both live right behind the store, and it would have been a really good way for him to access employment upon his arrival in the country. And mom's turned that into what you just said. Yeah. That's the truth. If you want to discriminate against workers for unionizing, we just want fair wages and we want protections for our jobs. No, well, that's... We have time for about one more and then we need to wrap up. 
Thank you very much. And I just want to express gratitude to moms and because I have been an organic shopper since the 70s and I have had to go all over the metropolitan area to try to find organic grains um, and the very few things that were available. So for people like me who are very passionate on the consumer end, about not supporting factory farms and not wanting all the pollution of, of the environment and who care about protecting and restoring the environment. It is so easy now because I live in a buoy and I, I used to go to College Park before the buoy store. So I really want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. You're doing a great atmosphere. Thank you for what you do for that. Thank you. At last. Uh, with that, thank you all for coming. We hope to see you soon.